All right, here we go. Here we go. Now, here, another prized game. Uh, two decks that haven't been featured on the channel just yet. I gave you, um, I gave you the simpler deck, not as a matter of like intellectual capacity, just because this is your first time with a deck. And the other deck is a little complicated, though against yours, I don't know that I'm going to get to show how complicated it is. All right, let's see. Finally, finalement, I will take it. Against your deck, I think you're probably going to deny me the resources to get to my late game, so I would call this a favorite match for you, but we'll see. I'll be on the play. Mm -hmm. Okay. I keep. I will keep as well. Alright, my friend, I would like to start off with a breeding pool. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Into a green sun zenith, and I would like to go and get Dryad Arbor. Okay. You know, shuffles back into the deck. You know that. You play elves. I'm used to explaining that to people, so... I didn't mean anything by it. And then I'll pass the turn. <laughs> Good old mana crypt. Yeah. So the convention that we use, by the way, YouTube, is that uh, if he rolls odds on mana crypt, it deals him three. If he rolls even, he's safe. Uh, it's not a coin toss, but it's effectively a coin toss. Oh boy, I'm glad I ramped on turn one then. Um, resolves. Oh. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Aggressive strip mine. I said <laughs> green sun zenith x equals zero. Yep. There is one other, and I should, probably shouldn't tell you there's only one other. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll pass the turn. So go for it. Alright, roll time. Okay, safe. <laughs> Dude, I, I need your luck. I really do. It may not look like it from this game because I won the die roll, but he won the six or so prior. <laughs> Wasteland? Uh, yeah. Wasteland's good. Go ahead. Alright. Hmm. Let me see. I would like to play Temple Garden tapped, or untapped, excuse me. I would like to... Let's see... It's too early. I would like to play a Wall of Blossoms for three. Mm -hmm. Trigger, draw a card. And then I will pass the turn. Okay. I need your luck. If you ever actually seriously play Vintage, play Mana Crypt in every deck you play. Is that Desert? Okay. Good old desert. In this format, it protects you from a fair bit. I would like to play a Misty Rainforest, mm -hmm. followed by a 3-mana Jace Wren's Prodigy, mm -hmm. and then I will pass the turn. <coughs> ah, finally. 
finally summon them at Adam a cage and now tell me he's not this captain of age. Shoutouts to gorillas. Okay, wasteland. Yeah, I have a breeding pool, temple garden, misty rainforest. But breeding pool, temple garden, really. So obviously this is a bank list, or at least a bank list. Uh, breeding pool? Mm -hmm. Alright, fair enough. Breeding pool is gone. Conrad! Conrad. Alright, YouTube. Uh, behind the scene that was Team One Lister Elf, there is a dog named Comrade that is bumping our setup. Although that's close enough, it's it's not perfect, but it's fine. Painter of Lawn. Oh, Painter of Okay, okay. Well, that changes things. Yeah, it resolves. Go ahead. End of turn, I would like to fetch, mm -hmm. which will put me to fifth. There we go, to 15, as soon as it decides to let me. <coughs> I would like to get a breeding pool tapped. Mm -hmm. So, strip mine, wasteland, wasteland. <laughs> yeah. Where's Crucible when you need it? Right here. Now, I would like to untap. Okay. Uh, wind swept heat. All right, Jace, do your thing. Checking the sideboard really quickly. This will take just a second. Oh, there's not an option in here. <laughs> uh, I want to keep every single one of these, but I can't. All right. Green Sun Zenith gets the boot. Alright, which transforms Jace into the Telepath Unbound. I will mark Jace on 5. And in the most irrelevant play known to man, I will make Painter Servant a negative 1-3. I don't think you really care though, because I don't think attacking is really your, your course of action. Yeah. That said... I would like to cast a Fintorn Elves, which is a, you know, good old Llanowar Elves for this format. It's the only Llanowar Elves we have. And I swear, if I don't beat Spear Resistance somehow, <laughs> I'm in trouble. Alright. Show me Grindstone off the top. Pass turn. Or in your hand. It wouldn't quite be game just yet because of Spear, but it would be pretty darn close. No, it would, actually, because of Lotus Battle. No, it wouldn't. He needs one more. It's one shy. Oh, yeah, well, our, our Mana Crypt. Sorry, Mana Crypt trigger. You stole my die. I did. My bad. My B. Ah. You get bolted. I, I don't think I'll need more than one. Alright, man, Show me your moves.
Oh, wow. Go ahead. Obvious fetch is obvious. Put me to 14. Uh. I guess we'll see what comes off the top. Jeez. This is not an easy one. Alright, deck. Oh, I just realized an interesting interaction between Jace, Telepath, and Bound and Green Sun Zenith. If that card would be put into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. Well, Green Sun Zenith isn't put into your graveyard, it's put into your library. You shuffle it as part of the spell, uh, as part of its effect. So it would not be exiled under Telepath Unbound. So if I, if I were to minus three here, then that is an option that I have. It's actually the only option as of right now. And given Sphere, probably the only option, period. Okay. However, that is exactly what we are going to do, because one, two, three, four, and pay the tax of Sphere. I would like to Green Sun Zenith X equal... Well, I have to fetch first, don't I, actually? If X is going to equal four, I need to fetch first. Sorry, I got a little ahead of myself. All right, a little ahead. We're just going to get an island. We. Easy enough. I would like to cast Green Sun Zenith, x equals 4. Hmm. I would like to go and get Captain Sisse. What is that? This allows me to search for a legend. As long as it's a legendary card. Legendary land, legendary hmm. creature, legendary planeswalker, because planeswalkers aren't a legendary for some stupid reason. Um then Captain Sisse will do that. However, it doesn't have haste, because green one. That being the case, I will... Let's see. I've done everything I can, so I'll pass the turn, and hope you don't just kill me in this turn. Top deck grindstone. Top deck smokestack. Uh-oh. Ah, uh, that's a three. Oh, sorry. Wait a minute. Sphere. Alright, resolves. Force of Will costs one to cast. Yeah, that's legal. That's legal in this format. Which I appreciate. I do. I... As much as Mark Rosewater thought that the Amonkhet Invocations were a bit of a miss, I actually rather liked them. I, they're my favorite of the Masterpiece series so far. Zendikar, Zendikar Expeditions were great at being what they were. Kaladesh were everywhere, but they were, you know, all useful cards. 90% of them were very useful cards. But the Almanket Invocations, as a blue mage, I appreciate it the most. Even though green's my favorite color, they gave us Force of Will, they gave us Daze, they gave us Stifle, and the Infect in me, the legacy infect player in me, cheered. All we needed was Flusterstorm. Oh. Yeah, that's fine. However we're doing it. Well, I forget the is <laughs> on the left. My we'll bad. Cut it. <laughs> I'm, I've mentioned this before. I'm used to putting mine away from the camera, and so out of force of habit, I put mine outside. Okay. I'll okay. oh, keep. Mm -hmm. Alright, 
Jace, Telepath, and Bam would like to plus in order to let's see, you are tapped out in order to make Solid Simulacrum, Sad Robot, uh, unable to deal damage this turn. Mm -hmm. That being the case, how many cards do you have in hand? Two. Two, okay. Right. I don't think we do it just yet. So in that case, five mana, four plus one. Garuk Relentless. Mm -hmm. Garuk would like to Garuk would like to have a word with your Painter Servant. It'll deal three damage to Painter Servant. Painter Servant will deal one damage to Garuk. Garuk, uh, when it has two or fewer loyalty counters on him, transform him. That will happen afterwards. So Garuk becomes Veil Cursed by a Painter Servant. You did name Black with Painter Servant, so it's flavorful, I suppose. Uh, I'm trying to make some sense out of this madness that we call life. Alright. And then... I will pass the turn. In case you need to pause and 1080p it, here you go. Did we roll for mana crypt? Yeah. Okay. I rolled a three. Sorry. I took it off. Thank you. I may have been paying too much attention to that. I'm so glad I did that last turn. I am so glad I'm not dead right now. Sack for blue bridge. Yeah, that's fair. And cards in hand is one, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm. No mana left. And that's a zero two. You can attack if you'd like, we just do this. Last turn. Into turn. I would like to tap Captain Sisei to get a legend out of my deck. Mm -hmm. God. Why? Why? Well. Which route do I want to take? Given the contents of my hand, believe it or not, thanks to the new legend rule, Jace the Mind Sculptor is legendary. It's legend, wait for it, dairy. And I'd like to join my hand. Um, there's one missing. Little out of order. 
Alright. Jace the Mind Sculptor, better than all. Still don't have any more targets for Jace Telepath and Bound's middle ability, so we'll just plus Solemn Simulacrum. Mm -hmm. Which will roll you up to five. Um, as for Jace, well, I'm debating. I'm debating that. We'll put you on three for now while I have a moment to think. In the meantime, Garuk the Veil Cursed would like to sacrifice as its minus one a wall of blossoms in order to get a creature. Obviously I have to reveal it because it declares what type it is, so I have to verify with you that it's that creature. And I will verify that it is... Hmm... Wow, actually. I will verify that it is wow. I will verify that it's a Finhorn Elves. I've had plenty of time to think about it. You're out on mana right now. And so I will say that Jace the Mind Sculptor would like to minus one. Jace the Mind Sculptor has his own sentience. If I walked away from the table, Jace would play the game by himself. Jace would like to unsummon your hangerback walker, so no thopters. And I would like to pass the turn. Actually, I wouldn't like to, but, you know, what choice do I have? I guess cap attack with Captain Sisse, but no. Oh, Ancient Tomb. Okay, Painter Servant. I know that was your top deck, but wow. Oh, white. Ooh. Yeah, that's game, I think. Let me make sure. Let me make sure. Captain's Disabled Tap. What could I have done to prevent that? What could I have done to prevent that from happening? Oh! <gasps> Wait. No, that card's not in this format. Oh! There's not a thing I could have done. There is actually something that I could do except Sphere Resistance is on the table, which is I have a Swords to Plowshares. No, yeah, yeah, I... Just do it with one words. more mana, one more mana, I could respond with Painter Servant. But alas, I cannot. So, I'm gonna make sure that I'm not missing something here, really quickly. I already have the one Flash creature in my hand, and I don't have nearly enough mana to cast it. Game, you got me, you got me. Blip, 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 blip. There, nailed it. Alright. Yup. Alright. I would like to be on the play. Mm -hmm. See if I can beat that sphere resistance somehow. Although I was only playing game one, so if we make it to game three, what's that going to be like? Ooh. 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 Yeah, okay. Huh. I'll keep. Okay. So, while he's shuffling, let me show the camera. Since I haven't seen your hands for the most part while you're doing this, I'm not sure, but I think that you and I have different thresholds for what we define as mulligan-worthy. Alright, so this is great, and I actually should put this one forward, and this one forward. Not you. Not you. Alright, so what I mean to say is that for my turn one plays, I have really a, a number, actually, which is always a good place to be. Later on in the game, you know, this is, this is fine, 
And I don't really want these to show up, but they matter, unfortunately, in certain circumstances. They matter. And if they were the card I would have sided in, instead of these, weirdly enough, it would have actually worked out. But because I got two, it would have worked out, not one. And it's, it's hard for me to explain, but I'll try to explain after the match. It's hard for me to explain without giving him a, a lot of information about what I'm trying to do here. If I were doing post-commentary, I think it would have been fun. Alright. Let's see what six and a half gets you. And in the meantime... I will keep this. Good when I decide which turn one I want to do. I've had all this time to think. Suffice to say, I have three turn one plays, although that may give you information to play against me. And all of them seem really good. But I'm going to go with the deck thinning one, sort of. We're going to green sun zenith for zero. Mm -hmm. It's not really deck thinning because the green sign gets shuffled back. Alright, and then I will pass the turn. Insert sphere resistance here. Sphere! Yup. Called it. Well, suffice to say, all roads lead to Rome on that play. <laughs> Alright. Go ahead. Well, that's awkward. Tap two. <laughs> you ready for this? I don't think you're ready for this. Soul Ring. <laughs> that would be the EDH worthy Soul Ring, maybe. And then I'll pass the turn. Okay. Go ahead. Hey, there we are. Obvious top deck land is obvious. I would like to cast Jace of Ren's Prodigy. Rip. I would like to fetch for a Temple Garden. So put me in 15. And then... In just a second, I would like to cast a thin horn elements. Would that resolve? Yeah. Alright. And then I will hopefully not care about sphere resistance for the rest of the game, and then I'll pass the turn. No color, one color, two color. Which I guess would put you down here, but you're still a creature. <clears throat> Close enough, buddy. Alright. Go ahead. <laughs> We're doing it. We're doing it. Jace? Mm hmm. Discard swords. It's odd to sequence it this way, but I really want to get all my plays in now. Omnith! Rawr. Hear me rawr. And on that note... Oh, Jay. No, no, he's not going to have both. Finhorn Elves. For two mana. As Richard Garfield intended. Pastor. 
Spoiler alert, I'm just gonna save us some time and fetch real quick. There we go. Wow. Even though this isn't the technically correct way to play, just for a casual game, I'm gonna save us some time and fetch out a elephant. Mmm, I already said it. I said Hallet Fountain. Probably should have been another Temple Garden because of Omnith. But you can see why I did that. That way you could cut me off one color. Uh, uh, I can't do after you shuffle at least. Boink. Oh gosh, show me, show me a Panner Servant. Oh, we're just raw grindstone? Yep. Okay. They don't share a color. Micaeus and Jace Friends Prodigy. Go ahead. Oh, you just grindstoned me with a Jace on the board. May God have pity on your soul. Wow, actually, that was the worst top deck, if I'm reading this correctly. Okay, no, this works. This actually works. Never mind. We get to have our cake, and we get to eat it, too. Okay, Jace, show me your moves. All right, we're going to draw, discard. We're going to discard Ulamog. However... Ulamog's trigger doesn't go on the stack until after Jace Friends Prodigy's ability resolves. Which means that there are, at the time, five or more cards in the graveyard, which means Jace becomes Telepath Inbound. Then Ulamog triggers and takes the whole graveyard with it. There's an Ulamog in this deck. You know there must be something degenerate, utterly degenerate, about to happen. I say about to happen, probably not. This is fear out, but. You know, that's part of the game plan. Ulamog. Yeah, that's a card we play. Thump. Alright. Well, my friend, I'm... You're at 18, and Jace does jack all on this board. Well, plus Jace. That's effectively the same thing. Alright. I would like to play a wall of blossoms. Draw a card. Nailed it. I would like to fetch. Mm -hmm. It'll resolve eventually. If it comes up to 10, that's just because it's delayed to no end. Hey, it came up to 10. <laughs> Called it. Alright. Alright, my friend. I would like to... Come at you, bro. Mm -hmm. No blockers, I assume? Um, obviously. Uh, so, one, two, three, four. I would like to dump four green mana into Omnith to make it a five five. Mm -hmm. And I would like to hit you for five. And then, pass turn. While Blossoms goes. 
here. Jace, both Jaces go here. Omnith actually goes here because we're going to follow a curve. One, two, three. Three. It resolves, yeah. Whenever it decides it wants to load, it's all good. Although, I will ask, you tapped five? Oh, okay, you tapped five, and then the planes came in. Mm -hmm. Very good, okay, just making sure. Yeah, that's one way to break the symmetry of the sphere of resistance. Okay. There's your top card. You got it. Just to make sure that we keep it straight, I'll keep... It's not technically four counters, but we understand what I mean. How many cards do you happen to have in hand? Four. Four. Yikes. Yikes. Alright, three mana. Engineered explosives, x equals one, one floating. I would like to pop engineered explosives. Supposed to do this first, but oops. You know what? I didn't declare it. It's a casual game, but it's a good way to make myself remember it for later. So I didn't declare it, but I should have tapped these. Can you tap man abilities in response to that? Mm -hmm. You can't? Okay. So we're good. But in the future, I'll try to sequence that correctly next time. Okay. Jace would like to plus in order to make Solemn Simulacrum irrelevant, even more irrelevant. And then, I don't want you to chump block and draw a card, so I'm going to Swords it. Since there's not a Grindstone out, I'm not worried about Swordsing a... Swordsing, there's a, there's a word for you. A uh, Painter Servant. So you'll gain zero life. And I've realized I sequenced that correctly for a reason. Dryad Arbor will go into uh, Omnith. I'll swing at you for eight. Mm -hmm. As I grab another one of these, I'll not steal one from your side that you've already picked out. Well, a bunch of D20s around. Hey, there we go. Uh, hit you for eight, put you to three, and I'll pass the turn. Zero cards in hand. Completely hell-bent. Okay. Game three. So this time, though, you'll be on the play, so... Turn one Sphere of Resistance, go! Here we go. Here we go now. Here we go now. Here we go. Alright. Now I will say that these are two of the new decks that I've built. I had the archetypes up previously, but I hadn't actually built the decks. Oh boy. Ooh. That's a bad habit of mine, I'll talk about in just a second. Alright, cool. Alright, so while he's doing that, I will let everyone know. So this is a bad habit of mine, and note this as a lesson for Magic players in general. When I decide whether or not I'm going to keep a hand, what I do, let's, let's shuffle the hand really quickly, is this is my hand. 
I will move the lands to the front. So I'll say you and you. Now that's a bad habit to get into because especially cognizant players, people that are actually watching for that sort of thing, will look to see how many times you do that to get an, a, a minimum, a floor, for how many lands you have. And that's something that I do when I watch other people as well. So be careful about that. Be very careful about that. Now, that notwithstanding, given that that's what's happened, this is the hand. So, you guys, you, now, given that I'm on the draw, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to capitalize on that at all, but we'll see. And then this, we'll finally get to see this side of the deck. Maybe, but we'll see. Also, you're pretty sick. There's a way that I can blow him out with that card, but I don't think we've gotten an opportunity to see that just yet. Alright, my friend. See what you get for six and a half. Close enough. Five plus one and a half. Oh no. Alright, alright. Six and a half again. We'll give you a freebie. I I don't like when games end up being uninteresting, uninteractive, because one player has just found themselves with way too few cards. So we'll we'll go back to six and a half this time. Now I I think I put twenty three lands in that deck though, or maybe it's twenty three when we count the mana blocks. There's a wasteland. Whatever. A little more shuffling. We're good. <coughs> <laughs> That's a good response. Alright, so again, did I tell you about this hand? <laughs> no. In all seriousness, uh, these two look like friends of mine from high school. That's pretty much exactly what they look like. The hair wasn't quite as red, but close enough. There, I just gave away one of the cards in my hand to him. I can't see you two, but I'm over here doing some yoga. Alright. <laughs> I don't like where this is going. Crucible already. And a Mox Oval. That's online. Go ahead. That's all. That's all you got. So that means you have three card or two cards because you mulligan the six. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm gonna regret letting you mulligan the six, but we'll let's uh, we'll see. All right. Let's see. Oh, those cats are so cute. All right, my friend. I would like to. Windswept Heath, Forest, into Finhorn Elves, past the turn. Those cats are so gear. Okay, he's safe. Oops. I can't focus. Those cats are too precious. Before I shuffle. Right on time. There we go. Get the bridge out. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Whoa. You'd think mono green stompy. Some sort. They are too cute, man. No, Conrad's got his head between the left, like right between the chair. Oh, well. 
Dogos be dogos, I guess. Lightning Greaves. Mm -hmm. Pass the turn. Alright, here we go. Blip, blip, blip. Now I will say though, he is cheating because this is his first glass and is barely below half. Oh my god, Crucible Smokestack. Shh. Okay. Go ahead. I could do something about this if this sphere weren't here. I can see. Okay. This is, it, it seems really premature if you're not familiar with the archetype, but basically he's going to be able to, on his upkeep, put a soot counter on smokestack, sack a land, whichever one he chooses, get it back with crucible, and I'll lose one every turn. In and of itself, that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing because I could wait till Smokestack puts a counter on, he sacks one, play Vincer, return Smokestack to hand, and be fine. And not fine ultimately, but fine for a turn. And then I'll draw into Finhorn Elves. Okay, that's fine. And then I'll draw into Omnith, and maybe I can get by from there. But because he has the Sphere Resistance out, I can't play the Vincer yet. And he's just going to out-attrition me. And there's there's no coming back from that. So, good games. Just to spell that out for everyone. All right. So for sideboards, yeah, we see the writing on the wall. This is not one of those redo play it out moments. We we see we see how this is going. All right. <laughs> so engineering explosives is sideboard. As are the copies of Where on Earth Did You Want It? Hey, Force of Will. The Force of Will is actually sideboard in this match because there aren't that many blue cards in the deck. And I have to add a significant number in order to get up to a decent number of blue cards for Force of Will. In other words, once I add Force of Will, they get, it crosses that critical threshold into Force of Will territory. Uh, when I add all four copies, I think it becomes 14 cards, which is actually really low. Uh, but with all the other interaction in the deck, it's fine, I think. Alright, so these are the ones, and by the way, I should also note, this changed between games 2 and 3, because games 2, I didn't have the Force of Will in the deck. I just had the Engineered Explosives. This is because on the first turn, I got to play a little bit more of what I hoped I would be able to play. And then game three, I knew that if I didn't have Force of Will to stop Sphere, I would be in trouble. Alright, so for cards I cited out, Cool Wall of Blossoms in game three, but Umazawa's GT and Opposition seem really bad against a non-creature deck. At least a non-creature deck. He does technically have creatures. Creatures that he controls like to actually, like to hit the discard pile. So, uh, the Umazawa's GT does very little. Opposition, not so much. I'd rather have Engineered Explosives to deal with cards like Sphere and Crucible come that time. Alright, so that's how I sideboarded. How about you? I see Trinisphere Chalice, Meekstone Balance, Containment Priest, Avon Mind Sensor. So, unfortunately, I have to say, while Avon Mind Sensor is an all-star in this match, Containment Priest does actual nothing, but you didn't know what I was playing and how it worked. So let me show well, you. Well, I really... saw the Green Sun Zenith. Okay, okay, that's fair. But very, very early Green Sun Zenith, it won't stop. But you're right, you're right. Past the turn one or two, it does. All right. So let me show you really quickly how this deck is supposed to go, and then we'll, we'll go from there. All right. So let's say that I have resolved a. Where are you, but Captain Sisse. Alright, so there are some cards like Paradox Engine that you never actually got the chance to see. And as a result, you didn't get to see the 
I'll put lightning rays out. Full picture of the deck. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So Captain is to say, lightning grief's not necessary, but appreciated. You, on a combo turn, get to tap Captain to say, get a creature, usually Micaeus the Lunark, as your first one. You'll, uh, with Paradox Engine, this allows you to, whenever you cast a spell, untap all non-land permanents you control. But lo and behold, that includes Captain to say. But, crucially, it also includes your anything that is in a land that makes mana. So your Finhorn Elves, your uh, Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, your Soul Ring. And so if you have enough of those out, eventually you get to the point where Captain Sasei will give you, you know, you'll get a Micaeus, cast it for white. You don't care that you're not actually resolving it. I mean, you're resolving it, but it's a zero zero, so it dies. But you don't care, because you're getting to untap everything, including Sasei because of Paradox Engine. Eventually, you use this loop to make enough mana that you can cast an Ulamog and destroy a permanent, say, in Snaring Bridge, and win the game from there. Part of the reason this match is so lopsided is that Sphere Resistance basically forces the combo turns to either have a ton of mana or you have to win off the fair or mid-range plan. And that's basically what was giving me a lot of trouble. Uh, if I had realized it, maybe Lightning Greaves comes out, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Yeah, so that's how the deck's supposed to work, but eh, that's how it goes.